Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 67, we'll wrap everything up with enterprise architecture strategies and take a look at two enterprise architecture strategy case studies. So this lesson is going to apply all four of the enterprise architecture strategies that we looked at and basically through these case studies kind of actually analyze each of the characteristics of these to make decisions. So here's what I would like to do. I'm going to introduce two different case studies. When I introduce the case study, we'll read it together and then I'd like you to hit pause. Go back to each of the lessons, number 63 for prescriptive, 64 for the classic alternatives, lesson 65 for distributed, and lesson 66 for the durable interface. Take a look at the characteristics, the pros and cons, and then hit play to be able to then see kind of the answer. And so I would like all of you listening to be able to select which enterprise architecture strategy would be best suited for this particular case study. Let's take a look at the first case study, Windows R Us. So Windows R Us is a large and profitable Windows manufacturing and distribution company, and it's been in business for over 75 years. They're a fairly stable company and own a large portion of the market share in the industry. Oh, must be nice. <laughs> the two main lines of business, the business units or business segments, are commercial windows, in other words, offices and schools, and then residential, homes, apartments, etc. For the most part, these two segments are autonomous, but all the manufacturing systems and all the financial reporting systems are managed centrally by the company. Each segment maintains its own systems for customer and order management distribution and the financial aspects of that line of business. So relationships are generally good between the business segments and between business and IT. So that's kind of our case study. What we've got is a large, stable company, as you can see from the diagram on the far left. So the question is this. Which enterprise architecture strategy would best suit Windows R Us and why is it the best one? And so what I would like every listener to do is to hit pause, think about it, analyze this case study, maybe go back to lessons 63 through 66, kind of review some of them, and then come back and see the answer. So I'm assuming that all of you uh, out there listening have come up with an answer, prescriptive, classic alternatives, distributed, or durable interface. Now let's actually analyze Windows R Us and see which strategy would probably be best. So let's take a look at the considerations first. And so if we analyze this case study, we have a large stable company. So company size is one of those things that really would drive one of these particular strategies right here. Um, there's not much change or innovation needed. In other words, they produce windows. And, and while there are some changes in the industry, there's not much. And there's very little innovation needed because they do own a large portion of the market share. There's really good relationships between not only each business segment, but also business and IT. That's very important, especially from a governance and compliance standpoint. Also, we have very autonomous segments with separate IT staff. And so we know that we do have autonomous segments. However, um, we, while we have a central system for managing that, um, we do have good market share, a stable customer base, but perhaps most importantly, there's minimal diversity here. So with these considerations in mind, I know hopefully most of you listening have selected a, one of these strategies, but if you'd like to hit pause right now, uh, that would be a good thing to do to take a look at these considerations to maybe readjust or confirm your particular decision. And so I'll pause for a little bit while you hit pause and then continue on. So now that we have the considerations in place, let's actually take a look at these. I think because we've got autonomous segments, um, but there's not a whole lot of diversity, it seems to me that the durable interface strategy is probably not a good choice. In other words, what I like to do is kind of eliminate those to see which ones are remaining. And because of that minimal diversity, in fact, um, Durable interface does not seem like a really good choice. Uh, as a matter of fact, neither does distributed. I think because they are stable, 
They're a large company with minimal innovation and not much change. And we don't need to go overboard by having commercial lines of business and residential lines of business doing their own thing, making their own decisions. As if remember, really high cost associated with those. And those minimally shared standards or those doable interfaces are really hard to maintain. So now we've got a choice of a centralized approach. Should it be prescriptive or classic alternatives? And you might think, well, each segment might have its own. Um, either of these would actually work. However, my choice would be prescriptive. Again, either of these two would work. But the prescriptive strategy here really provides that minimal diversity and really cuts costs, again, allowing for the reusable assets across these business units who are both selling and making windows. Okay, let's take a look now at a second case study. And this case study is a bridge too far. So Bridge Experts Incorporated is a large international company, but it's US based. And it provides both on-site consulting expertise about building bridges and also sophisticated software products for the design and building of highway bridges. And so they have two distinct lines of businesses, Bridge Consulting and Bridge Software Product Development. The segments clearly are highly autonomous. They maintain their own systems and have separate business models, but they do share customer relationships between them to leverage cross sales. In other words, the bridge experts are gonna to try to sell the software and as we're trying to sell software, we're gonna to try to sell the consulting aspect of it. Now, all financial reporting and accounting is maintained centrally by the home office and they do have offices across the US and Europe with the central home office and the data center located in New York. In recent years, they've seen their overall sales and revenue drop significantly due to increased competition as older bridges are more frequently replaced by newer ones. And because of this increased competition, they're concerned that they will lose their competitive advantage in the bridge, build, bridge building market and be forced to close their doors for good. So here we have a situation where hmm, highly diverse company um, that's kind of struggling financially. And so what enterprise architecture strategy would you think best suits Bridge Experts Inc. and why? So again, I would encourage you to hit pause, look at lessons 63 through 66 to get more information about these, and then make your decision. And so go ahead and hit resume when you're ready. And so if we look at the considerations here and do some analysis, we find a couple of interesting aspects. They're losing money. Cost is a concern right here. However, while cost is a concern, they really need a lot of innovation and agility, that ability to respond quickly to change within each of the business segments. Each separate business unit, in other words, each different segment of line of business has to, has to innovate. Um, there's highly autonomous segments. In other words, um, consulting for bridge construction as a contractor, a true building contractor, um, versus writing software are highly autonomous segments. Um, they do have communication and governance challenges. And so that's another thing to take into account. Um, also, remember, data is shared between these. And so if we kind of look at an analysis here, we kind of see prescriptive would not really be a good choice, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, having a central unit across the world defining everything, no. Um, that one we can immediately eliminate just really because of the innovation, agility within each segment. They need to be able to have their ability to do their own thing. However, there does need to be some level of synergy between. So in other words, I think between the distributed and the durable interface, don't forget the distributed means that there could be little or no communication between those business units. In order to really compete, these business units are going to have to be talking and sharing data with each other. And so I think the distributed strategy really falls apart here. And that leaves us with the classic alternatives and the durable interface. Now, interestingly enough, Either of these would work, everybody, but why I would chose, why I would choose the durable interface 
is because of the communication and governance challenges. You see, it's a large international company. Although they're based in the U.S., they have offices across the U.S. and also across Europe. And so the point is the classic alternatives, while it's cheaper, would be much more difficult communicating those standards to all the business units around the world. And therefore, although both of these would work, the durable interface strategy is probably one of the better strategies for this particular company. So this is, uh, for more information, of course, you could see lesson 62 through 66. Um, which is all about enterprise architecture strategies. I hope you enjoyed kind of this whole tour of one, two, three, four, five, six different lessons all about enterprise architecture and the corresponding strategies to actually make that work. Um, starting with lesson 68, um, we will be kind of looking at other different software architecture kind of things, but I, I hope you enjoyed this kind of summer uh, lesson through enterprise architecture strategies. And don't forget, Software Architecture Monday, every other Monday, I do post a lesson in some aspect of software architecture. I do private training classes in uh, microservices, uh, analyzing architecture, and also software architecture fundamentals. And so I'd encourage you to take a look at that training in my website and also any upcoming events that I'm doing through conferences, online training, and also public training events. And so this has been uh, Lesson 67, Enterprise Architecture Strategy Case Studies. Again, my name is Mark Richards. I hope you enjoyed that little tour of enterprise architecture. In Lesson 68, we'll get back to application architecture and look at some aspect of, of software architecture. Thank you so much for listening.